All right, hi guys. I'm Justin Reichling, and I'm a packaging engineering intern under Brad Thomas. Uh, I currently go to Georgia Institute of Technology and um, uh, plan on graduating spring of 2017. Uh, I'm from Suwannee, Georgia, which is about 45 minutes northeast of Atlanta, pretty close to here. And some of my hobbies include uh, baseball. Baseball's been a big influence on my life. I've played about 15 years, I actually played college baseball, and decided to give it up to focus more on academics and just other things in life. Uh, guitar is another one of my hobbies. I've played about three to four years, but uh, this past year I didn't play too much, so I started up again this internship, and it just, I really enjoyed it. It's a nice uh, stress reliever. Uh, college football, I'm a huge college football fan. If on a Saturday, if I'm not a Taco Mac, I'll be at the games. Just a big fan. Uh, and then pick up basketball. If you uh, watch LeBron James play, you'll see that he stole a few moves from me. So uh, <laughs> just be aware that I originally did all those things. Uh, here's my agenda. I'm going to start off with a few projects, uh, other activities that I did while at Clorox, some key takeaways, and then end with acknowledgments. So these are all the projects that I was on, but I'm going to go into more detail on these three. Uh, one of the big ones that I wanted to touch up on was the L4 palletizer. So I got on this as soon as I got to Clorox, and I actually got the honor of traveling out to uh, Aberdeen, Maryland, the second week that I was here, which if you had told me that I was traveling the second week, I was at a company like I would call you crazy. Like that was the coolest experience I ever had. First time I got to see a plan, and just really cool experience. Uh, so I'm going to start off with the Drive-In Valley Ranch canisters, a uh, Reno plant. So with this project, we're looking to in-house this very low-speed line uh, that is currently being co-packed or produced by another company. And so with only 1.8 million canisters being produced last year, it's a very low-speed line, 30 to 50 parts per minute. Uh, we came up with three potential options and we're looking to have a $600 to $1 million cost savings per year. Uh, my contributions, I got this about three weeks going in, coming into Clorox, and so I was quickly put uh, assigned project lead. Um, so with this, I started off by creating a scope alignment tool, which is a document that we use to align what we're going to do with the business. Uh, after we got that aligned, we started contacting vendors. So I contacted 15 plus vendors, pretty much found out what equipment they had to offer and what I could really do to find out more information about this project. And through this, I was able to develop a schedule and eventually create a document for uh, preliminary engineering that include uh, risks, pros, cons, and put up that all together so that I could present to our good OEM. Uh, this is the first option. Uh, so with these low speeds, we decided to go with the simulation <coughs> line. And with the semi-automatic line, you're going to have unloading station where the workers actually place these canisters onto the line with the correct orientation, and it goes through a cleaner, a filler, a capper, an induction sealer, labeler, and then actually goes to manual case packing station. So with this option, it has the most manual labor, but it's also one of the cheapest options at $1.25 million. Uh, option number two is a fully automatic line that pretty much works the exact same with the addition of two new machines, the unscrambler and the case packer. So this option, the way it works is they bring in huge boxes or gaylords with canisters and they dump them into the unscrambler. It, the unscrambler orients them around, puts them through the exact same line and then it's eventually case packed up again. This is our most expensive option at $2 million. So with this project, uh, the third option was actually a used equipment line that I didn't want to go into much detail on. And then with this project, we are simultaneously working on another project in the same plant that's going to be taking you about the same area. So we were waiting for business to decide what's the next uh, step. Uh, my second project that I was on was the British sticker applicator. And so what we were trying to do is install an IRC applicator to install these IRC stickers on the cartons in the plants. So right now what they are doing is Taking these stickers and insert renewal coupon is IRC, and what you can do is grab those, take them up to the register, and hand them in, and instantly save three dollars on this uh, on this part. So, what they're doing right now is going to the WalMarts and Targets and different stores and walking in there manually, placing them on the pallets. And so, with this, it's very inefficient, very slow, very expensive, and they're missing about fifty percent of the product. And so by installing that sticker applicator, we're looking to speed up the process, increase accuracy, and save $250,000 in the process. Uh, my contributions, I once again started out by creating a scope alignment tool. And by doing this, we ensured, again, that the business was online with us. Uh, prepared vendor visit, actually up to Brampton, and this was probably one of the coolest things that I did in this internship. So 
I got to fly up to Brampton, Ontario, and was able to actually see the plant there. So not only did I get to see a plant, but I also got to travel internationally, even though Canada's still technically internationally. So I was able to do that, really just see what they thought, their options, what they wanted to do, and then I was able to share that with the plant and through these AutoCAD layout options, and this is one of the things I'm gonna to touch up on later, is the importance of these pictures. And so with this, I was able to discuss with the plan, uh, create a formal vo uh, voice of customer and target criteria document. Uh, the results looking forward, so we actually got a loaner piece of equipment shipped up to this plant, and it is sitting there. We are waiting for SAP setup and then the uh, materials to ship in from Excel, and we are looking to install a permanent system and by the beginning of uh, this is my third and largest project, is Project Templeton. Uh, so what we're trying to do is create a new cat litter line that will change from these packages to these. And so with this, these new packages will be easier to use, uh, cheaper, and just overall a better package, more appealing. And so one key with this is pouch uniformity. And I'll touch on that later, but the cost <coughs> savings is looking to be five and a half to six million dollars a year. Um, my contribution, so I really focused on this project on the conveyor, and that was my one, because it's such a huge project that I focused on this, and what we had to do was find a way to convey these tight, uniform packages down 500 feet of conveyor without it settling too much, or else that would disturb downstream processes. And so, by doing that, we con uh, conducted initial reviews with vendors, we reached out to them, they came down to Kennesaw and actually got FaceTime, talked to them, and was able to figure out just what questions they had, what information I needed to find out, and this really was helpful. Uh, I was able to create a specification package and was able to send out that for a bids, and they were able to back to us, and I created a decision and analysis tool that we we're gonna be review, reviewing shortly. So the next steps is, as I said, presenting the decision analysis uh, document to the tech team, and just recommending a vendor after filling that out. Uh, we also are looking to conduct trials soon. Uh, other activities uh, while at Clorox, I'm going to touch up on a few things that I did these past six months. And so one of the biggest things was my brother got married, and I had the honor of serving as his best man. And so me being 21, I have not been to many weddings that I have really paid attention to, so I didn't know exactly what went into being a best man. <laughs> and I found out that it's just a lot of stress and having to give a speech that you aren't exactly sure what you're going to say in, so you have to just write it out, practice it a bunch. So the first half of the day, I was just freaking out, and like, it took me a little while to calm down. As soon as I got on that uh, stage, I was able to kick, uh, knock it out of the park, so one of the best weekends of my life. Uh, another thing that I picked up was golf. I played a little bit when I was younger, but I hadn't played recently, and so about three months ago, I started getting lessons, and I actually was lucky enough to play with the packaging group last, last week at Cobblestone, and when we were playing there, I actually won a hot dog from Sean Martin, so shout out to him for that. <laughs> uh, another thing I was involved in was the uh, STEM uh, in or science, yeah, the STEM events. So we were able to uh, work with elementary school kids and do experiments in front of them, and it was just really cool to see the looks on their faces. And regardless of what Brendan Lorada says later in his presentations, the dry ice was definitely the best experiment. <laughs> uh, another thing we got to do was tour Pratt Industries, which is a uh, corrugate box uh, manufacturing plant, and so. While there, we got to learn a lot about that, and I swear it was not nearly as boring as I just explained it. <laughs> uh, I got to fly on the private jet, which was honestly one of the coolest things that I've ever done. Coming here, I've flown three times. Three times in my life. And so being able to fly in that jet and go back and tell my friends about it, just unreal. Uh, another thing, I was a project coordinator at Tech Beautification Day, which is a uh, philanthropy event on Tech's campus where we pretty much just try to beautify Tech's campus by spreading fine straw, planting trees, plants, whatever needed to be done. Uh, the key takeaways, I learned to communicate in a business environment. So with this, it was setting up meetings, sending out emails, and once again, as I said earlier, showing visual aids to people, because a lot of the less technical people don't understand what you're trying to convey if you don't have a picture in front of them, because it's much easier to do that way. Uh, project management skills, so I was able to coordinate cross-functional meetings and pretty much just get everyone together and on the same page for many of my, many of my projects. Um, and then specification development, you really realize what goes into these specifications for different equipments and things like that. It's almost like a legally binding contract that is conveying exactly what you and the vendor have agreed upon. Uh, acknowledgements, so 
this internship, I actually had two different managers to start. And well, at the beginning, I started off with Kyle Vine, and he onboarded me, got me ready, did as best as possibly could do as a manager, and then actually switched to quality. So I got the fortune of having Brad Thomas come on as my manager. And through having two different managers, I was able to meet many different people, got to uh, be on different projects, so I got to see different sides of the Clorox packaging side. Uh, it was a really cool experience. Bruce Schubart, anytime I had any questions, I would go to him and he would help me out. And then HD Payson really helped me out a ton with the Dry Hidden Valley Ranch Canyon Series project. Uh, I'd like to thank the packaging department, uh, all the Kennesaw and Alpharetta interns, and then also Sean Martin for that hot dog. <laughs> uh, any questions? Yes, it is. This is my first internship. Oh, uh, yes, it is. This is my first internship.